Hi everyone, this is Heather from Maxon UK again and today I'm going to show you how you can control the effect of your dynamics tag when you've applied it onto objects such as a cloner or any other generator object in Cinema 4D. To illustrate what I mean, I've got this strand of DNA, although probably not scientifically accurate. Um, you can see here that this strand here is falling kind of as a compound shape. The one in the middle is falling into the separate section. So you've got the cylinder and then the sphere either side, but they're staying in that group. And then the one on the right hand side, all of the shapes are acting completely independently of each other. And this can be done just by using one setting in your dynamics tag. So let's jump into cinema and see how we can do this. So the first thing we need to do is to apply the tags onto the object. So on the floor, I need to add in a collider body tag. And then on the cloner, I need to add a rigid body tag. Now, if I press play straight away, you'll see we're getting the same effect as we did on the left hand side of the animation. So the cloner is being treated um, as one object. Um, and this is all down to the rigid body tag. If we wanted to change this, we need to come to the collision tab. If you go to the collision tab, I'm just going to pause that. You've got two settings. You've got inherit tag. Now this is for your kind of non generator object, just if you've got a normal hierarchy. Um, what we need to concentrate on is the individual elements, which by default is turned off which is why we're getting the effect that we're getting at the minute. You can see if I open up the hierarchy, I've got um, the cylinder and the two spheres kind of children of each other. So I'm going to show you the different effects. So the first setting is top level. So top level is going to look at each individual cylinder and the spheres as children. So if I press play, you can see the effect that we're getting. So each um, each of those segments, if you like, are, are behaving independently of each other. I'll just pause that. Second level is a little bit trickier to spot. This is just because it, it, it's my example, but I'll try and explain as much as I can. If I press play, um, you can see that the spheres are actually rolling off in pairs. That's because the spheres either end are sticking together um, because you've got the parent object here and then you've got the child object that's kind of following on. You can see in these two groups here, so you've got one and then you've got another one just following it there. So that's second level and then you've got all. So all of the um, shapes are going to be completely independent and you can see here they all fly off in different directions. So that's how you can control how um, your dynamics works on a cloner object. It doesn't just have to be a cloner object. As I said earlier, it could be um, any generator object. So I'm just going to give you another quick example. Um, to do that, I'm just going to mm, let me delete my cloner for a minute. And I'm going to use uh, Mo text. Okay, so I'll just change a few settings. I don't want it to be that thick, so I'm just going to reduce the depth to 10. Um, I'll keep going on the DNA theme. So if I copy and paste this a couple of times, copy, paste. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to put it in the middle and I'm going to reduce the height to something like 20 so it's a lot smaller and then just pull it up like so. Right, so now what we can do is apply a rigid body tag onto this Mo text. Okay, and again, we're going to jump straight into the collision tab with the individual elements. At the minute, it's turned off by default, which it always is. And you can see it's treating um, our Mo text as, as one object. If I change that to top level, it's going to treat um, the lines, each separate line individually. 
sorry you can't really see the effect of that too much so I'm just going to rotate slightly <laughs> there you go a slightly better idea so each line is being treated individually now um, and then we've got second level if I press play on that you can see each individual word um, is working independently of each other and then you've got all which deals with the individual letters so it's not just the cloner that you can use individual elements on um, things like Motex it, it can be quite a lot of fun as well so I hope you found that helpful um, and I shall see you in the next tutorial